All right, welcome back to Unbreakable Investor, the quiz show edition. So what do I mean about being an unbreakable investor? Well, I think the primary characteristic is that you're always on the prowl for fresh ideas, right? This way, you're never just jumping on the bandwagon, right? When something gets hot on Wall Street, let me tell you a secret. These Wall Street analysts, they know what's hot long after you know what's hot because you make it hot, right? Then they got to look at some spreadsheets and yada, yada. I, ha I actually have a chapter in the book that identifies, helps you identify investing opportunities because they're in front of us all the time. We just don't connect the dots. So I want to, I want to do an example with you all. Let's just say you, you read an article uh, t t this morning while you were uh, having breakfast, and it told you that there were 284 million used cars on the road with an average age of 12 and a half years. So 12 and a half years, average age. By the way, passenger cars, 16 years, those are some old rides, right? I mean, we're driving out there with some hoopties, right? <laughs> Even trucks, almost 12 years. So if you read that, and almost 300 million of them, you're thinking to yourself, golly, there's gotta be a way to make some money off this, right? So I'll ask you, what company or companies that you know that would make money? What companies would benefit from something like this? Come on, Chevrolet. who? Chevrolet. Chevrolet, who do you think? General Motors. General Motors? So if I, people are fixing up these old jalopies, what company, where do you go to get tools and equipment to fix up your car? Uh, uh, AutoZone. O'Reilly, AutoZone. Who else? All right, O'Reilly, AutoZone, Advance Auto, Right, that's the way you think. You connect the dots. You connect the dots, and if you do it right, almost every time you spend money, you'll actually be able to pay yourself back. So the first step is, all right, I'm thinking O'Reilly, AutoZone, Advance Auto, that's your first step. Someone's making money off of this. Now what do we do? Well, we start to do the homework. We've got the three names, and it, you know they all should benefit from this, but something interesting is here, O'Reilly, up almost 5,000%, 5,000% and just since 2004, guys, in 20 years, 5,000%. There are drug dealers out there like I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> Come on. AutoZone, 3,000%. Oh my God, it's so crazy. And all you had to do was buy the stock and put it away. Uh, but this is interesting, Advanced Auto, 183% over 20 years, ain't that great. What have you thought about this 20 years ago and you just picked Advance Auto. How could you have avoided that, right? So again, if you knew about these things, the next step would be, I know there's an opportunity there, and I want to go home and I want to do my homework, right? So keep that in mind. That's one of the things we'll talk about a little bit more in a special, and that's all obviously outlined in the book. Other aspects of being an unbreakable investor. Well, let's talk about some of them. Stay in the market through the ups and downs. You know. They have all these surveys, and they read them to you every time you think you could do it on your own. Well, history shows that retail investors always lose money. The problem is a lot of folks come in, and they buy stocks, usually one or two. The market goes down, and they sell. Statistically, you become a statistic. You have to ride the waves up and down. And we know life has ups and downs. Of course, the stock market is going to have ups and downs. If you have a bad day, you don't check out. You wait for the next day, right? Committed to adding fresh funds on a steady basis. You must always be adding money. It doesn't mean you always have to be long, but you should always practice putting money into the stock market. Always practice that. See opportunities when the market is pulling back. Where is the big money made when stocks go and sell? It's always interesting when someone walks past a store, you know, oh, it's, it's early fall, there's a sweater in the window, it's 200 bucks. Eh, they don't get it, then they wait. Next year, around February, March, is getting warm. That same sweater is like 120 bucks. People buy it. They'll say, I'll buy it and put it away because they see a value there. These great companies that are doing so many amazing things, when their stocks pull back, they don't all deserve to be where they are, but they all come back together usually, particularly when there's massive panic. That's when there's also massive opportunity, right? And put a little bit of elbow grease into the effort. I think you need about 120 uh, minutes a week. Half of that is just to check up on the stocks that you have. Now, every, every four or three months, three months is a quarterly earnings season. But also, the other half, just be on the prowl for new ideas. So if you can do these things, you're, you're, you're there. You are really there if you can do these three things. Now, I borrowed this chart from Brian uh, Fertile, Fertile, uh, and it's, it's just a pretty interesting thing about being committed, right? So short-term risk, uh, you see on this side, the risk versus rewards. So risky up here, long term, the longer you hold cash, the riskier it is. 
We know this because of inflation. You put 100 bucks under your pillow right now and grab it 20 years from now, I don't know what the hell you think you're going to buy with it. <laughs> you might as well, you know, I don't know what the hell you can do with it. So, and stocks are risky early, maybe, but long term, they're safe. That's if you do the work the right way. That's the way you want to be thinking about this. This is the way you're making a lifelong endeavor. Uh, I talked earlier about the sort of ups and downs. These are the crashes. These are the stock market crashes. Look, look at these numbers, down 50%, 40 30 Going back to the 1960, well, 1963, this is the crash that I endured, folks, right here. I've been, I dreamed about being a stockbroker since I was 14. I finally got a chance to be a broker. I was doing really well. I was working hard. No one was working harder than me. Back then, we had none of this email stuff. So, like, late at night, 10 o'clock at night, I'd be licking envelopes and stuffing them and stuff and calling people all day long. And I'm doing pretty good. In 1987 comes, right? Oh, my God. Now, before that, the market was killing it, right? It had a five-year period where it went up 250%. So, I'm new to the business. I'm like everyone else. I think Mark stocks only go up. You know, it's like, oh, hoop -doo -doo -doo. this is easy. Huh? I come in, Black Monday, the worst single day in the history of the stock market, down 22.6%. Halfway through the day, I admit, I went to a bar. I ain't joking. I, so 4.30 rolls around. I'm walking back to the office, and people are walking out like, <laughs> I'm like, how bad was it? Um, I, thought, I thought my career was over. This career I dreamed about, I thought it was over. But look how quickly it bounced back. I was calling people up. I thought they'd all be pissed off. Some were, but some weren't. The market comes back, folks. You have to ride these out. One thing that will help you ride them out is to know what you're doing. Knowledge is the key, right? So for me, I like to do several things, right? Uh, I've got what I call my three pillars, right? Fundamental, technical, and behavioral analysis. Fundamentals is critically important, the most important part. The parts you use, I mean, listen, there's anecdotal things you can do. Every industry has its own industry reports that could even give you more insight. There's a lot of ways you can learn about the fundamentals of a company. But to learn, to really, to, again, I mentioned quarterly earnings reports. Part of that are income statements, cash flow statements, and balance sheets, right? Again, you looked at these, uh, you went to the auto parts store. Everyone's got an old car. You're going there a lot. You want to invest. So you get those three companies I had up earlier and you start to go through their income statements, their cash flow statements, their balance sheet statements. And I'm going to tell you right now, you would not have been in advanced auto. I don't think you've owned that stock. So what's the next thing? Technical analysis. Now, some people think this is voodoo. <laughs> OK, it's, it's not. In fact, it's really kind of eerily scary how great technical analysis is. So usually for me, fundamentals tell me what I want to buy, what I want to own. And technical analysis tell me when I want to buy it and when I want to own it. I just put up some charts here that I think are really simple to understand, but extraordinarily effective. Head and shoulders is a, is a bearish formation, a rectangle, so a stock is trading in a pattern. By the way, straight lines, straight lines are your key. These straight lines, it could be trend lines, it could be channels. Those are always your key. A breakout there, that's a buy signal. That's a buy signal. That's a buy signal. On the downside, it's a sell signal. It's pretty simple. By the way, the double, double bottom, a lot of people were saying, oh, man, the stock is down again. They're selling here when, ironically, that's when they should be buying, or at least buying here when it breaks through the line, and the double top. So double bottom means the stock is going down. It's going to a place it was before. It holds, and it's coming back. Get ready. Get ready. Start champing at the bit. It breaks through a certain level, start to buy. Same thing on the upside. It almost broke out here, almost broke out here. It didn't, because what happens is you say, well, you know what, it was up a couple of times. When it's down here, I'll hold for the next move. And it never comes. Technical analysis, very, very important part of what you're doing. And then behavioral analysis, <laughs> okay, or group think maybe, I don't know. I think we were in sort of a behavioral uh, element for this market over the last month or so where we just became unmoored from fundamentals and even technicals, right? So the thing about behavioral analysis is, is but how, how this, this is up from Alan Greenspan. Alan Greenspan, December 5th, 1996. This is one of, one of the most famous Wall Street speeches in history. It's also known as their irrational exuberance speech. 
And the market was rocking, right? Again, it became unmoored to fundamentals, nothing. It was just running because people saw it running, other people bought. And it was one of these things you thought, well, it's going to exhaust itself at some point. So this was a statement that Alan Greenspan made. And this line here I thought was most important. But how do we know when irrational exuberance has unduly escalated asset values, which then become subject to unexpected and prolonged con contractions as they have in Japan over the past decade. So Japan had what they called a lost decade, eventually it lost two decades. He was saying, how do we know when this is happening? Well, he kind of answered it himself, though. He said it became unmoored, right? It became unduly, unduly escalated. But there's a way to make money when behavior takes over, emotions take over. You just cannot fall, become, fall into it, right? There's a lot of times I own a stock, I think, okay, I'm going to take profits at 20, it goes to 21, 22. I'm like, I'll ride this wave, but this ain't no $22 stock, right? So don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. And in the meantime, to sort of give you an example recently of everyone jumping on the bandwagon and things that if people took five seconds to think about, at the very least, they would have been traders or avoided these stocks. Rivian. And, you know, that's IPO. Remember Rivian IPO? Everyone went crazy. I finally saw a picture of one. I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> eh, I don't know. So anyway, Rivian's only down 95% since November 2021. Here's another good one, Peloton. Remember Peloton? Even Wall Street was touting this bad boy. Like, oh, I was crazy. Like, I just got a Peloton. I like the stock. Whoa, hold on, cowboy. Everyone can't afford a $3,000 stationary bike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just, so common sense, if common sense would have taken over, you'd have known that maybe it was going to go down, although down 98%, ouch, right? So, you know, you employ, you know, all of these sort of approaches, right? to individual ideas, and the bottom line is, you're gonna do better. Again, that's why you're gonna take some time to do all of these things. This is why, do we have any more charts here? Oh, I gotta go with this last chart, right? This is the reality of markets. They're gonna be bull markets, they're gonna be bear markets. They're inevitable. So what? Look at the thick lines, look at the thick parts of this, folks, compared to the red parts. Do you endure this little bitty thing to enjoy this, would you? Would you be okay down 20% in two months to get 400% over the next nine years? Would anyone trade that off? But how many people sold there? How many people, look at this little sliver. How many people sold there? So if you can adore these little tiny red things and start buying there, knowing that these things are right around the corner, I think you're gonna be okay. So I've said it before, the stock market is the greatest money-making machine in history, and everyone must take advantage of it. If you want to stay ahead of life and you want to get to your goals, listen, inflation's going to come, recession's going to come, calamities are going to come, they're always going to be here. So one thing I want to know, let you know, everyone in the audience got a free copy of my book, but they got a signed copy. Unbreakable Investor, if you like your copy at home, go to unbreakableinvestor.com right now, get your free copy, and we'll be right back.